Sometimes you hear a lot of people making statements and asking themselves, well, what are you really doing to create the change that you want in our country? And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes when people are asked such questions, they think with political lenses or other lenses or whatever. But I think we really need to put ourselves as a key stakeholder group that does a lot of good work, that has achieved a lot in trying to bring everything to the fore so that the population knows, so that they stay informed. But my central question to you is, if you want to see certain changes in Uganda, things that you can think about yourself as an individual, you say, I would really want to see this change, I would want to see this change. You need to ask yourself, in my profession, what can I do to build that narrative? Because our work as media advocates is to build strong narratives. And these narratives should be able to engage other people, to bring them into the fold, to ask the fundamental questions. Maybe sometimes we don't even need to ask our, those questions ourselves. But we need to get people to begin asking those questions. Okay? So that at the end of the day, whether we are influencing policy, which is usually the underlying rock of advocacy, that if you do successful advocacy, then you will impact policy change. Why? Because all countries or all nations will work towards development goals, but all these are embedded within what? Policies. And that is why the moment you say advocacy, at the end of that they are saying, did you change policy? Okay? That is the idea. But I always say this emphatically, that the moment you're doing advocacy in developing countries, and here I can even say in Africa, you have to look beyond that angle. Because if you talk about policy development in Uganda and policy change, you always know the, uh, the, 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 the phrases that come along with that. Hmm? That Uganda, we are so famous in producing what? Viable and sound policies. But there is always that other next step from policy into action. And that is what our tool should be able to do. Can we influence the policies that exist to be seen in real life? But also importantly, we should know that when it comes to leadership and decision making in developing countries, the people who hold the power to decide usually don't necessarily or 100% look at policies. What does that mean? Because if you found a fellow person, a fellow colleague of yours doing advocacy in Europe or other countries in the world, they only focus on one thing. If I can impact this change in policy under subsection this, 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 once that change is there, they walk away. Congratulations, the work is done. Do you know why? Because those countries systematically follow the policies. They say, rule of, <laughs> they use rulers. We are supposed to allocate what? This percentage every year. That's it, allocate. There's no discussion. It's there. It's in the policy. In our country and others, sometimes you don't necessarily see that happen. For so many reasons. Okay, so that's a given. What does that mean? That in countries like ours, you've come to a point where you see that the decision or the belief of the LC5 chairperson in District X, or the clerk, or cow, in Township, or, 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 or District X, eh? or the decision of this minister matters a lot, okay? That's why sometimes when certain issues come up, where does everyone look? We are waiting to see what the president is going to do. Because these are decision makers. And their decisions will always influence a lot that happens down the line. Which means that we should also be deliberate in our advocacy. Don't only focus on policy. It's important, by the way. It's a starting point. We have to always have strong and sound policies. And as advocates, we have to take interest in knowing what the policy says and what the preferred position should be. Okay? But move further and go for the decision maker. And speak to them in the way that they understand or the way that appeals to them so that they can see your point of view and engage them because once they are convinced of your line of thought 
If they say, I think we need to do this, or we are going to change this, what happens? It happens. If you talk about salary increments, if someone says, okay, we should increase salaries, it will happen. Okay? But we've seen policies that talk about salary increments and the like, but they simply remain policies. So you might go to a health center and you want to advance maternal health, and you're looking at this poor health uh, a health center in charge and you're bombarding them and you're asking them questions and the like but as an advocate ask yourself does this man despite the fact that he's in the in, he's the in charge have the power to make all the decisions yes as a health center in charge that person can make certain decisions so they are powerful but there are clearly some decisions that are beyond them and for you it's your responsibility to say hmm I better go and talk to the other person because that person is the one whose decision will influence what's going to happen down here. So that is having like the open mind view and you say, mm, okay, if I'm doing advocacy, I should be able to identify the key stakeholders, the key decision makers, and then see how I'm going to engage. So if your story or your piece, which has an advocacy intention and angle in it, okay, is going to be written, be sure that when you're writing and sending your message, you're sending it to the right person. Otherwise, if you write a story about Namayingo Health Center and you just tell the health center in charge wasn't available for comment and da, 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 da. at the end of the day, my question is this. Okay, I hear your point. I can see the issue you're raising, but who is making the decision that will impact the outcomes that you want to see in Namayingo Health Center? And if I don't see those in your story, then I'm saying you shot in the dark or you shot blanks, okay? The idea should be that get all the stakeholders and be sure that these are the people. It also calls for you to do some intelligence, okay? That you actually take time to investigate. And this is when we take our, we put on our investigative heart and you say, when I go in the district council in Masindi, who are the influencers? Sometimes you find someone seated in a district council, they don't say much. They're always there quiet. When you say hello, they say hello back. Welcome, sir. They say hello back and they're happy and whatever. And then these other people who we call uh, the parrot like, eh? come and they debate and they talk and what? And everyone says, oh my God, that councillor woman, Sarah, is very, very good. She talks a lot. But does she decide anything at the end of the day? No. Nope. This other person who comes and sits, after everything has been said, he'll just twist his neck and say, that is not practical. Story. He didn't even say it out loud. He just said it to two people. That is not going to work. Full stop. So for us, we went there and engaged an entire day with all these counselors who are giving us praises and who are talking and whatever. The decision maker was not moved. So it means when we are doing our work, we want to engage the right people. Engage all, but be sure that you hear the sentiment so you have the understanding of the final decision makers.